All right, Miners University. There we go. Recording June second, twenty twenty four, just right after uh, UFC three hundred two. What's up? I'm your host, Pocholo Cruz. With me here, Mike Devore. What's up, Yo, Mike? what up? <laughs> what up, man? Just I'm so awake right now. I, I got oh, super point. awake. I People totally did not wake away. up like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. We are awake right now. We are awake. So I guess talking about UFC 302, I guess uh how about you? How about you, Mike? What were your thoughts like when, when you watched it? Oh man, it uh I I like uh the the overall the card was okay. Yeah. Uh okay, it was there there wasn't really much like that stood out to me, but man, I had so much faith in Dustin finishing the story. <laughs> yeah. I like everyone. I went to the, I went to the bar last night to okay. watch it. Okay. And then, uh, we, we had a, we had a large group and okay. everyone's like, Oh, who do you got? Who do you got? And I was just like, you know what? I'm going to call it, dude. Uh, I have faith that Dustin will finish his story. Nice. And, and everyone's like, no, like, it's, I'm just going to drown him. I'm just like, I have faith. And then as the uh, as the as the fight progressed, yeah, I was just like, "Holy shit! This is like, this is one of those fucking moments that like, like he troubled, like he fought through adversity to win the fight, and then yeah. he got finished." <laughs> yeah. I was like, "Ah!" I, I was just so I just think it looked like it looked like I mean, especially with like how how it began with how strong Islam looked, with just like oh instant takedown, like kind of rocked him. I was like, "Oh damn, is this gonna be like a quick night for Dustin?" And then yeah. But then to have him like fight back, and to hang to hang in there until yeah, really I mean what when he started defending the takedowns in the second and third and fourth round and I mean he still got taken down like a few times but his takedown defense was looking actually pretty solid apart from I guess the first round was probably the worst his takedown defense looked yeah and then, yeah, yeah. And in the in the, in the fifth. When it looked like Islam was gassing, and it's like, oh man, they're, they're striking. He has a chance, and then nah, <laughs> there you yeah, go. He, 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 then he shut that shit down. Yeah, man. The, like I forget oh, what, the the ankle pick that was fucking clean, dude. I was just yeah. like, I, I I think that's what it's called, the ankle pick. Like, uh, yeah, it was man, a modified. Yeah, from talking about like the single leg. So he had a single leg. He was trying to get it, and then he prim he did like essentially like a whip over. It's very, yeah, it's like what they call a Russian tie snap. But with the wrist, but he did it with uh, essentially his ankle. But it's like I, I would say like a modified ankle pick. At that, that, yeah. that that was clean as fuck. Whatever it is, that was slick. Like that's that was slick as fuck. Like, yeah, like just to, to have the the mental uh, wherewithal to be like to know that like that's an option in For the sure. middle. Of, that that just like shows like how, how how much their their fucking grappling is on next level. Like that man, dude. Like I was just. Uh, Man, I was I was so sad. I I got emotional when uh when Dustin came out to the to the diamond song. <laughs> that was uh, I was just like, this is like a diamonds. Like oh here it goes. <laughs> he, he, this is it. This is his night. Like yeah, everything yeah. was everything was just lining up and then eh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, but sometimes yeah sometimes that that that's how it goes. But yeah, I know, I know with the, with the with the diamond walkout, just yeah, just because there was that meme of you know the guy singing shark fight yeah. like a diamond. Yes. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I played that song a, a, a bunch of times this week. <laughs> played like, it a bunch it. of times. He's this is it. this. this. It, 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 to me, this was the uh, this was the theme song as if it was like the, the Conor McGregor theme song for against <laughs> Floyd Floyd Mayweather. There's yeah. only one Conor McGregor. No one can do it better. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but yeah, no, I mean Dustin got like, got very close, but yeah, I mean really props to Islam Makachev. I mean. He was able, looked, uh, looked, looked, looked good in the strike. I mean, really, if you take a look at the numbers, he he outstruck Poirier. I mean, of course, kept it up with the takedowns. I mean, submissions clearly were great. I mean, there were some other close moments that that Islam had beforehand, like close was close with a, was close with a Kimura, close with yeah. a like, choke, like a lot of back control. Uh, and yeah, I mean, the darts to finish it that was that that was really slick. Like yeah, there, and then like even Dustin said, yeah, he yeah he went out, and you could see that too in the replay. <laughs> like as he's tapping, he <laughs> just like yeah, he, he just went out. So I mean, no no contesting that kind of stoppage there. Yeah, it was just 
So, and also with all the uh, damage also that Islam got, like was cut, bleeding. And you could actually sense some uh, some concern like from his corner too. Like with that, it's like, oh no, you gotta you gotta take him down. You gotta you gotta finish this. That that's why that, that's why like like that, like uh when, as soon as uh Islam won you saw you saw Khabib's uh or his corner or Islam's corner just like bob, ru- ru- yeah. bob him just like yeah. yeah you did it yeah <laughs> you, you did it so no man. which just shows like how how they were feeling because they know that they were that was close it was looking yeah. it was looking uh yeah it was looking do, you, do you know what the scorecards were going in I don't know what the scorecards were, but I would assume that Islam would be winning. But that's the thing with scorecards. Who knows? Like, I I, yeah. I didn't see the rest. I really only saw I saw pretty much what the Holland and I forget Holland's opponent's name, Marco Ulam or something. Uh, I saw uh, that fight. Yeah. I saw the co-man and I saw the man. But they mentioned something about the scorecards, and yeah, that's that's always kind of wonky, and especially like who who knows how 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 it goes. But yeah. I would assume that Makachev was winning, but. It's, the, it's I the honestly crowd. They're yelling USA a lot, yeah. <laughs> as they should. As they should. I don't get why. I don't get why all these other countries don't scream USA. I mean, yeah. Like, I mean, it's probably some of them do, but they're just like bloody USA or just like <laughs> death to USA. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, death to the infidels. <laughs> but but as long as they're as long as they're saying our name, <laughs> <laughs> you may love us, you may hate us, but you feel some way about us. <laughs> <laughs> We sound like Bye. bad reality show contestants. Like, I'm not here to make friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to make money. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, no, I, would, I, would, I would say, it. I, I would think that Makachev was winning. I'd say at least, because let's see, if we go round by round, got to give him the first round. I mean, take down, good control, took his back. Probably the same thing with the second, because wasn't the second he also had his back for about two minutes or so. And yeah. almost got him with like a submission. I would say he's probably up at least three rounds, maybe even arguably four. Like, how about you, Mike? What, what do your What do you think if you were scoring? Honestly, I was so into the fight, like I was just so emotionally engaged with how yeah. the fight was going yeah. that I didn't really like. Like, I it was hard for me to take a step back and be objective. Back, yeah, because yeah, I I think like uh, you get you get I got um I got sucked into the to the idea of like dustin winning like yeah. just like, like just how poetic everything was just coming the adversity he was going the, the fact that he hurt his knee yeah. like uh, i will say though like one thing that i honestly didn't like think dustin looked as sharp as he normally does mm-hmm. like I, I felt like he was just a little slower than islam at times and yeah. but like but dustin hung in there until the very end and like it was, it was like yeah, to answer your question, I I don't like honestly, I I I don't have a, I don't have a score for. I I I could have emotionally, I could see it two two, yeah. going into the fifth, um. But yeah, I I I I like to be objective in this type of shit. I totally wasn't objective. I I, I want. <laughs> I was just uh, I was biased as I was biased as fuck. You know. <laughs> you were shining yeah. bright like a diamond. But uh... shining bright like a diamond. Shining bright. Like a diamond. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I would say, yeah, uh, in terms of like how Dustin looked, I, I think that was just, I think that's just good game planning by Islam just because of able to shake in the takedowns, especially with how, like how fat, I think that's gotta be the game plan. Like strike with him a little bit, make him strike back at you and then duck underneath. And he's just, he's just good at mixing that up. And I think that's why Dustin was, you know, hesitant. He's not getting the combos that he's used to Yeah, in terms of that. It could contrast that with the uh, Benoit Saint Denis, who Benoit Saint Denis kind of just like charged at him and was really not hiding what he was trying to do, and it yeah. made it, it was more obvious in terms of countering, in terms of striking. And when he stood and traded, he wasn't as defensively sound. I would say Islam is like pretty, sh- pretty slick on the feet. Uh, he's good. He's like good defensively. Yeah, I would say he was probably getting some combos, like landing him. I think being a southpaw too is a big factor. As well, like both, like both southpaws, and yeah, just, just, uh, yeah, just overall, overall, very skilled. Like, you know, like uh, I, I don't know if I'm late to the to the bandwagon for Islam, yeah. But man, like, uh, like when when I was watching his highlights, yeah, uh, like leading up to the fight, I was like, fucking Islam, like low key has hands, yeah. Like he has good striking. Like Islam uh, actually has good striking, and the thing is because everyone. He always gets the Habib comparison, but yeah, I mean, if we look at like 
I look at them skill for skill. I honestly think that Islam, I think Islam's a more skilled striker. And I would say arguably, probably a more like technician on the ground or a more Damn. a slicker. Because if you look at finishes wise, I want to say he has like more submission victories and also uh probably more like I think probably the better, I mean, maybe not knockout victories, but at least like he has the better striking uh, of, of the guys or of, of between him and, and Habib. And Khabib. But uh and I think that it really goes. It's always it's interesting in MMA. It's like the little brother syndrome because you the little I think oh I think the younger brother ends up being the better fighter. If like two brothers get involved in something, the younger brother ends up being like end up ends up being more skilled. Yeah. Because if you look at like if you take a look at an example like Nick and Nate Diaz, arguably Nate is is the more accomplished. I mean he's yeah. a younger brother, more accomplished, more got more done really in his in his career. I will I would say so. And then if we take a look at I guess a similar example is the Anthony is the Anthony Pettis and Sergio Pettis. I yeah. guess Anthony Pettis was lightweight champion, but now Sergio Pettis was like a multiple time like champion and like other organizations like in Bellator and things like that. But I would say that he was uh, that Sergio is actually the more skilled technician, whereas Anthony was the more flashy kind of a uh, explosive guy. And I think that's kind of the, the dynamic that Habib and Islam have. I think Habib is, I think Habib's the better athlete. And nice. he's the more dom dominant in that kind of regards. But in being so dominant, he looks better in terms of that because he knows what he needs to do. He knows he needs to take someone to the ground and like and be and beat them up, which makes them more impressive. Smash, smash yeah, exactly. your boys. Smash. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> why he looks whereas like I feel not that Islam is a bad athlete, but compared to Habib, he's not the same kind of that's not the same kind of machine. Yeah, in terms of that, and I think that kind of, sh but in doing so, because he doesn't quite have the athletic horsepower, he has to be more skilled, and I think that also comes to develops of the styles because you know these guys train with each other. Habib probably beat up Islam so much in the training room that Islam had to get slicker because of that, and I think that's the same thing with like you know Nick and Nate. Like Nick probably like beat up Nate so often that he had to like gain these other other auxiliary skills in, ter in terms of that. So. Yeah, I think that's yeah, no, that's that's well said. That's well, yeah. well fucking said. Yeah, like, it, it, yeah, like, I, one thing I, I, cause I watched the, uh, I, I watched this post fight press conference and, okay. and like, uh, one thing he says, which I think was pretty, pretty cold, is just like, he's like, he said something along the lines of, he's just like, yeah, yeah like, he's like, I, I, I don't, I don't like going to decision because there's many questions. When when you finish, there's no questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have yeah. all the answers you need. <laughs> for sure, for yeah, sure. Yeah. And I think all yeah, probably if we take a look at let's take a look at his record here. I want to say he probably has because I know Habib has finishes, but I think Islam in terms of like how or I guess like in terms of how many, let's see how many finishes he has. All right, so he's got 12 submissions. And five knockouts, so seventeen. So pretty much, so he's only gone by decision. So he's only won by decision nine times. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, that's so I guess like that. yeah, the majority. Yeah. So more than half. Uh, yeah. So if he has, so he has twenty six wins. So over ha almost half of them have been by submission. Five of them by knockout. I want to say it's a higher finishing rate than Habib. Let's take a look at Habib's record here. All right. So Habib twenty nine and zero. Okay. Okay, well, I guess Habib. Okay, Habib has eleven. Okay, so yeah, Habib has eleven submission wins. I guess eight knockout wins. I guess I forget. I don't really recall him having that many knockouts. Those are probably are, are, are they are, are they are, are they all in Russia? <laughs> probably. <laughs> He's against, just against... he fought the same guy eight times. <laughs> <laughs> same night. It's, it's Islam with a mustache. Just like... <laughs> <laughs> brother, brother, <laughs> brother. Why yeah. you do this? Right. Like uh, one thing that I thought was cool leading up to the, the uh, to the fight was when uh, when Islam says like instead of having a ruby on his belt he wants a diamond. <laughs> 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 I thought that was pretty fucking cool. Um, I was just like, that's, that's cold. That's, that's cold. That's cold. <laughs> You're a cold man, Islam. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, man. Well, yeah. Nope. I mean, too bad for Dustin. But hey, man. He. That's what I mean. That's why people watch sports, right? Yeah, because it's real, and that's the thing. It seemed like seemed like it was gonna be a storybook ending, until it wasn't. Yeah. It yeah, until oh. until he disappointed hit me. <laughs> <laughs>
How dare how you, dare, Justin? How dare you not fight for <laughs> my uh, entertainment? How, how dare you not know who I am, Mike DeVore? <laughs> I'm Mike you DeVore. Rooting for you. I was rooting for you. I almost cried during your walkout. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I guess um, in terms of that, I mean, I mean, it seems like Islam going to fight Armand Sarukia next. Yeah. Interested to see that. I think that'll be, I think that'll be a good fight. Uh, and I guess for Dustin, I guess, yeah, he's not too sure. But here's the thing. I think if, if his old buddy McGregor gets it done against, against Chandler, I feel like they got to. I feel like they got to run it back, run it back again. Well, you know, but yeah. they, 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 I think they asked him that in the post fight conference, and like okay. he, he, at the moment, at the time, he's like, he, he, he's not really looking for a money fight. Okay. That I, I agree with you. Like, I, yeah. there, there's two things. Actually, I was thinking this. I was like, I, I wonder if, uh, if Connor finishes Chandler in spectacular fashion, I, I could see oh, the him leapfrogging and fighting. Yeah, fighting. yeah, I could yeah. see that too. Yeah, yeah, like uh, Armand, stay home. Get back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you didn't want to. You didn't want to fight him this time. I guess you're gonna have to wait. <laughs> yeah, guess. Oh, guess you gotta wait. Look and that, that would be a fucking great. That would be a great fucking fight. I still like. Uh, I still like uh, how Connor just talks shit. So like, uh, <laughs> he call he calls Islam cussing fucker. <laughs> <laughs> I love because I think I might have shared that with you, but I saw this meme where it's like Connor, like you know, I'm going to be respectful from now on. I don't need to. I don't need to bring people's families in, into this. Yeah, look at you, cousin fuck. I just see me. <laughs> look at this. Oh, yeah, you did send that to me. That, that show was funny. That show was funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Okay, but no, I I can see that too. Like, uh, yeah, if I could see if Connor just like dust. Chandler, I could even immediately see him giving him a title shot. Like, yeah, well, that's what like uh, Dustin Poirier said. Like, uh, he was just like, he thinks if the old Connor shows up to this fight, like he like he feels that like like he's gonna finish uh, Chandler. Yeah, like uh, because I guess like uh, th these are Dustin's words. Like uh, uh, Chandler, like is kind of like like his style. Like isn't suitable for a sniper like Connor, for sure. No, I, and I can definitely see that. I mean, because style wise, if anything, like style, the closest like opponent that McGregor has had that's been like Chandler for him has been a Chad Mendez. I feel like Chandler is definitely like a, a much larger Chad Mendez, but look yeah, what, but look, but look what Connor was able to do on a pretty much like because Chandler, he's like you know he's fast twitch, he's explosive, who he's a good wrestler, but he's not really a control wrestler. And he has power, but he's not really like defensively sound. And yeah, <laughs> see you at the top. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, this is your house. This is your house right here. Yeah. Master score. I, I, I love the memes. <laughs> like, uh, it's like someone tweeted at uh, Chandler. He was, she, she was just like, "Hey, I'm having tro trouble like paying rent. Can you help me out?" And he just responds, "No, you'll find a way." <laughs> 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 See you at the top. <laughs> See you at the top. <laughs> oh, damn. Okay. What did you think of the Paula Costa fight? I thought. Uh, I thought Costa looked good in the first. Yeah. But I, but I really think I think that would should have been a unanimous decision though for, uh, for Strickland. I felt yeah. like Strickland got at least. It's pretty arguable to give him really any to give not not to give him not to give Costa any round, maybe two. I think maybe giving him two rounds is generous. But fuck if uh, if if Costa would have won via split decision, I would have laughed my ass off. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's fucking hilarious. Like that would uh, be hilarious. Yeah. yeah well, well, this is this is what I, I was talking to uh, one of the people at the bar about this about, okay. the, about uh, Costa, but yeah. it, it just looked like costa could not get settled yeah like he like he couldn't get set and fucking strickland's like like strickland's like approach uh, is just so like his defense is just so like it's so unorthodox like that like well, it's kind of he it's awkward. very awkwardly and it's hard to yeah, get yeah. His timing i think That's, is, he is got the i carly defense <laughs> yeah yeah exactly he's got the he's got the victorious defense it's not gonna it's not gonna yeah he's got he's got the nick at night 52 blocks. <laughs> but, uh, no, well, that's the thing because, in terms of, because arguably, arguably Costa looked better against Robert Whitaker 
But the thing is, Whitaker is, is a more of a he's more sometimes like sometimes like looking janky, just yeah. make just just makes it harder for the other person to time you. Like in, in terms of that, because that's not the kind of defense that you expect. If you're used to nice polished striking, then that's you know so, sometimes. But of course, sometimes looking janky also gets you fucking fucking dropped. Yeah. <laughs> like if you fight like if you fight like yeah yeah, <laughs> exactly. yeah yeah yeah. But uh, I but I I think the biggest thing, yeah, I think the biggest thing just with uh with Paulo Costa is yeah he never took initiative or he like and I think Strickland knowing that or knowing that he can't give the initiative like never let him get get that like he never yeah. let him get get rolling because he knows that that's how his style like goes or particularly knows his style that he can't let him get set and i felt like he used the reach advantage he used like the jabs and then he's like all right i'm gonna get hit but i if i just pour it on him he won't be able to catch up and i felt like that's a thing and the commentator kind of speaking about that too too much backpedaling with like costa and, i uh, i thought I, I was i was curious to see like how like drained costa would be because this is his it's not his first five rounder but i think it was the first like time he went to five rounds to, like uh he, he went into the uh championship rounds uh but like man like i was I, like like either costa to me like in, just from off the top of my mind i don't recall him being such like a, a heavy cardio person yeah like and and i know from experience when when you're sparring someone and you're constantly on backpedaling like that can be that can be draining for sure yeah so so, so are you saying that you felt like cardio definitely was a factor in this fight like I don't know if it was a factor in this fight particularly, but I I, I think like it, it it I think it it was mostly I think the main factor was uh, Costa could not get set yeah uh, he he couldn't find his rhythm and then on top of that added adding the ca cardio factor For like sure. uh, yeah so well man. I think I think along with that because you know I mean he looked okay in the fifth but I felt like what he did is that he just saved a bunch of he kind of like coasted until the fifth and like all right now I'll, I'll try I'll try yeah again. okay I yeah I see that too yeah yeah because you know because I felt like he kind of upped his volume like oh maybe he got tired but he was already so far behind and it anything less than a knockout wouldn't have gotten him anything so yeah yeah that's fair that, that's, a, that's a good point I liked uh, Sean Strickland's uh, uh, three ninjas kick at the end. And then him getting a, a picture with the president afterwards. That was pretty funny. Oh, man, man, dude, I, I laughed so hard. Like, not to get political, but man, it's just like whenever they showed Trump on, on, on the screen at the bar, yeah. it, you hear half boos and half cheers. Yeah. And then, like, uh, and then <laughs> it was funny because someone, like, someone, like, when they showed Trump one time, like, someone yelled, Trump 2024. Four, and then I yell Trump 34. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, oh, politics, oh, you're politics. so funny. But yeah, so I guess with the uh, I guess with the Strickland win, what do you think? How, where do you think Strickland goes like from here? I think, uh, I think he waits for a minute for the title shot. Uh, I, I think uh, they let Duplessis and Adesanya fight 305, I believe. Is it, so? Is that confirmed? Like Adesanya I don't know if it's confirmed, but like it's it's Australia. It's Australia. So, like, oh, yeah. So Come on, China man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, like uh, the the real South, uh, the real African king. Uh, Duplessis. Uh, Duplessis. Exactly. No, I, I, I th honestly think. Uh, well, I think two things. Like uh, I think Adesanya fights. Uh, uh, I think Adesanya fights Duplessis for the championship, yeah. okay. and Strickland is a backup. Strickland's backup. Yeah, I I, I honestly think like because there's like, also Hamzat Whitaker coming up too. Ooh, I forgot about that. But that that's that's after or that's before actually, huh? Is that before? Uh, I want to say that's later this month. I want to say that's the twenty second. I want to say that's oh like, shit. Okay, I didn't realize it was that close. Oh, that, is that Abu Dhabi? Yeah, it's Abu. No, it's oh, Abu, it's, it's uh, Saudi Arabia. I want to say because it's fuck. a Kingdom Arena. So I'm pretty sure that's uh I'm pretty sure that's uh Saudi Arabia. Yeah, let's see here. Yeah, Whitaker Hamzat. Yeah, June twenty second. Yeah, coming up in less than Holy three weeks. Fuck. I didn't even realize that. I, like, yeah. damn, they got some good cards coming up. I know. I feel like uh, that's the thing. So, uh, I think it depends. I. But I think if you know either if either Whitaker or Hamza looks impressive, I feel like they get the next they get the next tile shot. Yeah. In terms of that.
I well, think I, I guess it, yeah, right. I guess it does. Okay, it's because that's the thing. If Adesanya, because if Adesanya beats Duplessis, then what do you th- then maybe Strickland has a shot of saying like, hey, I beat that guy. How about you give me like like a rematch in terms of that? so. Yeah, and maybe maybe two on side two wants to run that back just because <laughs> he loves he does he doesn't like losing the games. So. He, he he just needs one. He just yeah, needs he just one. needs one. He's like, <laughs> no one beats me three times in a row. <laughs> no one beats me in kickboxing and then follows me to MMA and beats me there <laughs> and then wins consecutively. No one. Yeah, nobody. No one's here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those are funny. Like the no one beats me eleven times in a row. <laughs> yeah. No, no yeah. Uh, but yeah, how's everything else, man? Like, uh, like uh, anything on your end or like training and everything? It is going well. Let's see. Got uh, oh, got two guys that are well. They so they fought in Street Beefs West Coast, and now their videos finally came out. One one of them, well, one of their videos like came out. One of them, it's like. If you look on Street Beast West Coast Sensei versus Asura. Oh, yeah. Who? Who? Who those guys? <laughs> uh, I'll share. I'll share with you the link, Mike. You can take a look at that. But uh, uh, let's see. Probably some competitions. Maybe like end of June. Maybe some smokers, and then there's a kickboxing like tournament thing or something here at the end of July, like July 26. I want to say maybe maybe an amateur MMA like some tough enough in july as well but yeah just that's what those guys are pretty much looking forward to how about you mike uh how how have the shows been how's it been how's comedy Thank you. Uh, thanks for asking uh you're not gonna ask me about my kickboxing fight no i'm joking no no you're a wise man uh <laughs> no comedy is going you know okay so this is where i'm at with comedy like so the last three months i've been I've been working new material yeah. and like they worked at first and now like I, I, I've been like, like uh, working them in like in, in front of different audiences okay. and like, so, like, I'm just like, I guess I'm just like questioning whether or not they're working or not. You know, I'm trying to be objective here. Like, and, okay. and it's kind of like, it, it's kind of messing with me a little mentally, like just like, cause I'm getting, I'm gearing up like uh, the biggest reason why I'm like setting up a new material is cause I have, I have, I have a couple shows lined up in San Diego. Okay. And, and like in San Diego is like where I was like, all right, I'm gonna put like, uh, the, these are the shows where I'm on. I get, those are my goal shows. Like those are the shows that like to me, it's like, uh, that I'm preparing the most for. Yeah. It's like a showcase and kind of thing. Right? It's a showcase. Yeah. It, it's a showcase. And, like the fact that like some of these like new jokes like aren't be as consistent as I'd like them to be is kind of messing with me. It's like sure. it, it's making me second guess because like like I I feel like uh because they work like they're they're funny the the jokes work before but like I I will say the new style of writing that I'm in isn't uh universally accepted by like it, it's mm. I used to write material because I'm like oh everyone would like this Got it. but I, I realized like wh- while doing that I didn't like it because I didn't feel like I was being my true authentic self Got it. now now my material is it's like a lot of it's fucked up like it, it's yeah. true it's true sure. but it's fucked up and so sometimes it divides the room and it, Got it. so so it, I'm I'm learning to adjust to being okay with like only 50 percent of the uh, uh people liking my shit like sure. uh, the, because like i i like i i don't know and also too i don't know if it's just the the location of where i'm at like i'm, I'm in seattle so sometimes yeah. seattle can be a little bit more sensitive than other sure. so I, i've done a set like in puyallup yeah and like the, the people down there fucking eat my shit up, eat so, your like, shit up right? yeah 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 so like uh, it's uh so that's just where i'm at but like comedy itself is is going well and like i got a couple shows lined up in june and i got like i got a couple shows lined up in july so i'm happy nice. yeah i think maybe i mean this may this may or may not help but i think with the sometimes it comes with it may not even be the material it could just be like how you feel about the material and that might just kind of show especially if you're like oh this is like this is seattle people are more sensitive here maybe you're maybe with just inwardly thinking that you're outwardly expressing kind of your that's discomfort. a good point that's Maybe a good point saying that because i think that's the thing too it's it's uh like so bring it back to like to fighting it's like 
guys in the gym, they're very comfortable, but like once you take them into a setting that's like not the gym, they feel like, oh no, like all of a sudden I'm doing different stuff when like, no, you're doing the same thing. You just have to be comfortable. You have to be comfortable that just do what you've done before and and that and that's gonna go out. It's never gonna be like a straight translation in terms of doing so, just because you you're always like how like when when you do it from a state of comfort and now when you do it when like you know when it's showtime and you gotta get things done, I think the really the people that are the best at it, they're just able to translate as much as possible from a state of comfort into that. Cause it's never like a you know a one for one like translate i would say like the greats kind of do what 90 percent, maybe like a little bit more than that in terms of in terms of how good just because it's like fighting the nerves and they don't get overwhelmed by that and then they will be more of their their true selves in that in that instance yeah. that's a really good fucking point observation i because you know what like that's something i try to remind myself of, like as far as getting comfortable in multiple venues yeah. across just being comfortable like I, I i i talked to somebody about this uh, another comic where I was just like, I like, I, I one of my favorite mics here in the Seattle area is uh, Tony V's in Everett. Oh, yeah. Everett, Everett yeah. That's where I feel like really, like, there's like a, a handful of venues where I feel really comfortable in. Okay. Tony yeah. V's is one of them. And I, I try to like bring that same comfort and level to Tony V's. Like I use yeah. that as a gauge to yeah. see how comfortable I am in other venues. Like, yeah. If I feel like uh, it's like your I, home, I, like comedy gym, I, essentially. Yeah, yeah. If I feel like I'm at home at different venues, I just know like when I'm more looser, that's when like, I'm like, I'm on my game. But then yeah. there's times where like when I, if I'm in my head, and I'm just like, man, like fucking, like I just need to do my set, and like, yeah. like that's when I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, I'm I'm being a little tight right now. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's because you you get in your own way, because and I, and I think that's the thing with like fighting in terms of in comedy. Because you never do it essentially, you never do it alone. There's always like you're interacting with something, like you're yeah. fighting, you're interacting with another person, comedy, you're interacting with the audience. But you can't control what that other entity is. You can't control, you can only control your opponent, you can only control your audience like so much. So sometimes, really, the only thing you can control is how you react and how you how respond to things. So yeah, I, mean, that's, I think that's like a and the, that's such a good fucking point. I think this is like uh my brother posted this uh mm -hmm. recently like this video of this uh i don't know if it, i don't know if it's a video if it was like a twitter thread or something okay. where it was like i guess you could control what's in your control like yeah. uh like you know don't fo and for me like the only thing that's in my control is just is writing and getting funnier yeah and just just trying to like get better at comedy i can't control where i get booked i can't yeah. control who books me i can't control what's going to happen yeah. down the road i could like the only thing i can focus on is just being a better comic yeah and i think that's very like uh <clears throat> i think like that's a very common thing across different mediums like whether it's fighting or comedy or whatever like it just control what's in control it's like the sur like, i'm in recovery so yeah one of the common things that we say is the serenity prayer like mm -hmm. god grant me the serenity to accept the things that cannot change the courage to change the things that can and the wisdom to know the difference and like i live by it i live by that uh that prayer and it's very it's so fuck like it's like like when you first hear it you're like yeah whatever whatever but then if you actually like yeah. if you like actually think about what it is like god grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, which is it's like everything outside of my control. Yeah. If I can just accept that they're out of my control, the courage to th change the things I can, it's just like okay, these are what I can't control, and the wisdom to know the difference. Yeah, like some like that's that's what I was lacking the longest. It's just like it's like no, I want to control everything. Like, yeah, like, I want I want to like uh, change people's minds, but I, I I can't control that. Yeah, it's it's outside of your influence. Yeah, yeah. and worrying about it isn't going to help it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So like. So that's I don't know, man. Like, uh, so that it kind of ties back to like what, like, uh, the, the comfort thing. Yeah, is just like uh, there's just some things outside my control, and like uh, I can't control whether or not the audience laughs at my material. Yeah, but I I can like choose just to like tweak it better and like uh, figure and just try to figure out why it's not as consistent. If For that sure. makes sense. Yeah, and I think with with the consistency, I think comes with the comfort too, because I think and. And and that's the thing because 
I feel like with audiences, especially when they think of comedy, they only think of like you know the highest form of you know much like a lot of polished comedy. Like any yeah. anything you see that's like a special, that's like been recorded several days. They you know it's been edited, it's all that make it to look good. And that's the thing too is like when people think of fighting, they think of you know nice like you know professional fighters, guys that have done this for years, like mastered <laughs> it. And then whereas if you see like a viral like street brawl, it's like guys are like flopping, doing <laughs> like why would you even throw that? It's like uh yeah, it's it's very sloppy. And I think you're not because that's the thing, you're at the, you're at the it's you're at the tough point where you're not an amateur at it, so you're not like because you had you know you've had some experience. But you're, but you know, you know where you want to be, but it's because yeah. you're far from there, or it's in your mind you're far from there. But in actuality, if you take a look back, you're actually way farther than than than, than where you started. And in fact, if you take if someone was a beginner, there really isn't that much. Uh, you would seem as far as reach, or you would almost seem just as far as somebody that's like further along the line, just because of from their vantage point. So sometimes seeing that and having comfort in that, because that's kind of what, you know, what 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 I'll tell my guys when they're, you know, when they're about to fight. Because, of course, you know, nerves going to happen to everybody. Nerves happens, like, no matter, especially when you have to perform. When you have to perform un under stress in front of a crowd, like, with, like, hostile environment, I mean, common not exactly but you know they can like boo they can like hate you i didn't perform in russia yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah they, right. they wanted to drown me and see, like, they show me who i really am but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah but but you know what i mean like where there's consequences like one of the consequences is going to be some anxiety there's going to be some kind of fear but you have to realize like how far you've come to get there and realize that trust in yourself and your preparation because that's what's going to that's what's going to take you over there because like in your mind, the fear and the, and the anxiousness comes from a state of, of that's not, that's not reality. In terms of that, so it's almost like you're letting things, like once again, letting things that are not in your control, letting things that are not even real, like affect you. So you have to just you have to be present in that moment. To, yeah. To, uh, no, yeah, uh, yeah. That's a that, that's, a, that's really really fucking good. Yeah, just being present, and that's what I'm working on. Just being present in every moment. Yeah. So. Yeah. But no, it's 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 hard to do so. I mean, it's easy to say. That's a, that's the thing. It's not like a, like you know when you say the serenity prayer. It's not like you don't believe in it. It's just harder to put it in practice. Yeah, you know, like, especially like as it gets you know. <laughs> you know what? You know the the fun, the funny thing that you said. You mentioned being present. Like it rem like it reminds me of this book that I just read, probably not too long ago. It's called Be Here Now. Be here and, now. And the premise of it is. Basically, the, the what I took from the whole book okay. is that you can end suffering by just being present. Ah, like it's it, 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 like that's that that's yeah. the entire book. Okay, it, it, it's just like it's like it talks about like when you're not present, you, when you're worried about the past or you're anxious about the future, you're suffering. You may not yeah. be suffering like like you're dying, but like you're suffering. Like you, you're yeah. like you have anxiety, you have something. Yeah. But when you're just in the moment and you accept it, like, hey, like I'm I'm sitting here in a podcast right now. Yeah. I'm yeah. not suffering <laughs> unless I, unless I don't like talking to you. Like, oh God, I'm suffering. <laughs> now I'm suffering. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah. but like it's um, it, it it it's a it's like it's a very simple book, and it just talks about like being one with the universe and being very just being present and just yeah. uh finding balance and like man like it it, it kind of like it it, it really sh like shaped my outlook on life and not just in comedy but just like just like how like uh how i just approach things like sometimes i'll be i'll freak out like i'll be nervous about work it's like oh, i got this major project coming up but i'm like wait i'm, I'm not uh, i'm not uh, it's, it's like it, the project's on Wednesday. It's it's fucking Sunday. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like, so like let me let me be present now. Let me enjoy Sunday. And then, yeah. So, the, yeah. sorry that, that you what you said about being present. That's what sparked. Up yeah, that. no, that's what sparked. It. No, I mean, and that's the thing too. It's not it's not that people don't know how to do it. It's just a matter of putting it into practice. Yes, and making and making a note of yeah, because. Well, the, the way I think about it is like it's just getting your equilibrium because we're, you know, we're, if we're like a ship out in the sea of life or the ocean of life, we can't, like, there's so much shit that's happening at us. 
all we can really do is just control where we're going, where how we're steering, and then yeah, we'll, yeah, let, let the other things like the tide's gonna go, waves gonna come crash, how how yeah. how whatever is gonna happen is gonna happen. You just have, yeah. You have to yeah. yeah, 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 and yeah. No, thank you for saying all that. Yeah. No problem, man. I guess now in terms of like your material, like uh, we kind of talked about like last, but like what, like what, what's been like anything like particular, like you've been workshopping or some things that you think like of, actual examples or I mean, don't need to say anything. No, I yeah, no, like how's your like, writing like, process going? Like, what no, do you, no, so, so where I've been writing from, I just like instead of like writing like, hey, this is a funny thing that happened to me. Yeah, I, I write from a perspective. It's like, okay, what is my honest reaction to what's going on? Okay. And like, so I, I write from, I'm learning to write from a very honest place Got it. where, uh, like, because I, I, I find that honesty is the, is the funniest thing in the world. Like the, the, the most, like, the most funny things in the world are the true things. And yeah, like, like sometimes authentic coming from your authentic self, <laughs> from coming from your authentic self. Yeah. And sometimes like, like I'm starting to realize, like, like I, I accept it. I'm saying this out loud for the first time. Like I, I, I have a fucked up sense of humor. Like, yeah. I, like uh, I, I'm, I'm not a bad person. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a loving human being. Yeah. But I also think like <laughs> a lot of shit is funny. Like to me, like, I sure. just like, I like to like think of things like it's like okay, I know that I am this way. I know that I'm a very loving, accepting person. How can I make racism funny? Yeah, yeah. Like how can I like uh, make like the. <clears throat> How can I make the, the legal stuff that I'm going through with my ex mm -hmm. like funny? Like, how yeah. can I like uh, like? And it comes like, with like perspective. It's just like flipping it. But I think that's that's one of the things in terms of humor, right? It's like it's kind of like a magic trick. It's the the trick is in it's the unexpected. Like yes, people, it's like people kind of think, oh, I know where this is going, and they're like, oh no, it's not where it's going, and that yeah. and that's where essentially the magic happens. Like with that, exactly. So so to answer your question, like the type of material like that I'm working on, it's like is uh I'll, I'll tell you this other one offline but like because uh, yeah. i'm still like yeah. working like yeah, you know, you're still working around it, yeah I'm still working it but like uh like one like one of it like is just like <clears throat> actually i'll just say it like but basically the idea is like uh it's like uh so like I'm going through like a parenting plan with my ex, like uh, yeah. getting over visitation rights, and she's having me like jump through all like she, when she was sent what she sent me at first was like I need to do this, that, this, that, and this. Like it was and it was like a big list. It was very like like it was a lot. Yeah. And then like I and then my first initial reaction was just like it's like how bad do I want to see my daughter? <laughs> like, how, how, like, you know, like, yeah. like how, like, this is a lot. Like, do, do I really want to see yeah. my daughter? Like, yeah. and, what has she like, done for me lately? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, is she even worth it? Like, uh, so that's like that, 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 like, and, and it's not saying that I don't want, I, of course I want to see my daughter. Yeah. 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 But it, it's just funny to me that that was my first initial reaction. Yeah. Was just it's like, damn, like, how, how bad, like, that's a lot. And then I, I'm also like talking about like finding God, like, yeah. uh, cause like, I, I just think it's funny. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's funny to me. Like, uh, like how I used to not believe in God and yeah. like now, and then I had a manic episode. I went crazy. And then yeah. I found God during that, yeah. uh, during that episode. Yeah. And then, like, I, and I side jokingly say, I, I'm just like, yeah, I found, uh, found God, uh, at Evergreen hospital in Kirkland, uh, in the psych ward, <laughs> in the psych ward. That's where I found him. Yeah, and yeah. then I talk about, and I, yeah, so I, I say some like, and then I also have, I, I, I just, I riff this tag and I'm really proud of it. Okay. It's like, I, 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 I said, I say like, I didn't believe in God before because I was raised Catholic. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> so yeah, th 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 those are the types. And then I, and I talk about racism and like, and just like, uh, just, I don't know, like, cause I think at the core of who I am, I definitely, this this is what shifted in me and it'll, it'll kind of co come back full circle like it the, i used to i used to want to bring the world together i still i still want to bring the world together i, I want to make the world a better place i really want yeah. to bring positivity and love into the world but then like I, with the serenity prayer i realized I, like i can't control how others like i i can give them all the you can like you know like yeah. for example like you can give someone all the information like a, yeah. like a flat earther all yeah. the information like as to why the earth's yeah. not flat yeah. but they're still be like, 
or so flat. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So so it's like so like when you learn to let go Which of this like NASA? That, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so the, NASA the, <laughs> yeah so that's funny uh <laughs> so like so for me it's like it's like okay i can't change I, I can't like i can't change the world so like what can i do to find peace with like for myself and it, like i can change myself yeah. i can i can find peace from within i can make heaven on earth for myself yeah. and if everyone like picks up on that they can follow along but if not sure. i can't i'm not expecting them to follow along I, like yeah. uh so so now it's like I'm I'm writing from like that place where it's like okay like what can I what can I do to for me to bring heaven on earth and yeah. like uh, finding peace and like writing comedy writing stuff that's pretty genuine from from my point of view it, it, this is a this is new new territory for me like uh, like I said I used to write externally yeah. for all my other jokes now it's like it's like okay like it's like a shift now it, and, and you want to know something funny it's like yeah. now that like now that i'm being very vulnerable and being very personal with my material yeah when people don't laugh it's like oh you guys don't like me <laughs> <laughs> it's like a personal stat. <laughs> it's a personal it's a, like and i'm learning to accept i think that. of it's the like, michael jordan meme like that's why i took it personally <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. but and, and, I, and i think on that regards well one i think i think that's very good because I th what's happening is you're you're looking you're looking for humor you're looking for creativity that's like harmonizes with 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 you and you're just looking for how that correlates you know with you know your audience and i think that's if anything that that is i think that's more difficult than what you didn't do before because maybe you weren't exactly catering but you're trying to reach like a, a, more, a more general audience was was what you're trying to go for like writing jokes for other people rather than writing jokes for yourself i mean maybe not exactly that but the, yeah. the the general the general notion of it and but i think what you can find and that, another shift too is that uh once again looking for heaven within yourself and then just seeing who wants to you know indulge or share in that peace or like can see that is what's great but then realizing too that people have a choice and if they choose not to not, not not to see that that's ultimately their own choice and that's not and that's the thing it's not saying that they don't because you, you because even though you're creating these like you are more than just what you're than what your jokes and what your creativity is so that's just like one part of it just because someone doesn't like that one part doesn't mean that ah oh, they hate all of you but that, yeah. that's the society we live in today it's yeah like, that's, like, that, that is true it's so it easy might, to go into that kind of notion where it's like, oh, I don't like this part of you. I must hate a hundred percent of you. <laughs> yeah, they go, they go hard in the paint. Yeah. <laughs> with, with the hate. Well, like there, there's like a, I want, I'm trying to figure this out. Like, it, it, and then this is just an idea or premise. Yeah. I want to write a joke about accountability. Okay. It's like, it's like, when are we going to be accountable for our actions? It's like, it's like, like I, 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 what I'm trying to say is it's like, it's like, like oh the war on Gaza like well like what, what did you do this to cause that yeah. <laughs> like yeah. uh, and, and, well, it, why would you I, let that happen <laughs> why would you let that happen like it's like yeah. I didn't let that happen like oh but you voted for Biden like you know what yeah. I mean like not to like like yeah. like it's like and so I'm I but I I'm not trying to get this political I'm just trying to like. <laughs> I'm just like, cause I don't, I honestly don't care about politics. I, I really, and I don't want, I'm not trying to make this a policy thing. Like, uh, I, I voted for Kanye. So, <laughs> uh, 2024 Kanye, Kanye 2024. Yeah. And like, but I, I'm trying to like find a way to like, to make things like, uh, like, or I just like the idea of like a lot of times people like to place blame on externally. Yeah. like for things outside their control i just want to make something funny where it's just like no like what did you do to contribute to that like yeah. like uh you, you may not have a direct correlation to it but like there's something in the butterfly, the effect. butterfly effect yeah like that you, that you did to cause uh like maybe you shouldn't have uh, stolen that apple juice uh, when yeah, you were right. a kid, and maybe like, maybe Gaza would still be around. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who knows? You could be part of the problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You you and your consumerism of buying yeah. apple juice. Yeah. So. <laughs> so. Uh, okay. No, that, that, that's just what I'm working on. That's the type of stuff that I like. Uh, I'm trying. Like, I guess I'm trying. Like, not not to harp uh, harp on this a lot, but I'm just trying to write from a place where it's like stuff that really matters to me. What's my honest reaction to it? Yeah. And then just figuring out the jokes from there. Yeah. No, but I but I think that's good from like any kind of creative standpoint. 
in terms of that because another another thing I think about too when it comes to uh when it comes like to training martial arts it's uh, like you got to be the best version of yourself you can't be like you can't be a, a too big copy of who you want to be or, or someone yeah. that you that you admire and I, and I think that comes with like uh because that's like one focus I think about when like when I teach like when I teach uh, when I teach students is that uh yeah there's like techniques there's like skills that they can incorporate but ultimately they, they don't need to copy me because I'm me so what works for me isn't going to work for them what works for them may not work for me they got to figure out what's ultimately going to work for them and that's comes with that comes with the freedom and comfort to let themselves explore what is going to what 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 works best for them and it's it's like a fine balance of like okay how much like a too free are you too constricting but now I'm really aiming to the part where all right just let there's like some general concepts that you need to be good at or need to understand and now you need to cuz in essence i think it makes because students are used to being like handheld and like hand fed in terms of like technique and i think it's kind of harder for them to figure out on their own but i think ultimately because i'm looking at long run i think long run you're going to be much better off because this is how you're going to learn eventually it's like it's as opposed to it's like opposed to giving a person a fish versus teaching a person how, how to fish is like yeah what i'm thinking i but think like, I, yeah. I think the, what you just said right there giving people the uh, exploration to figure out their journey like you didn't say that specifically yeah but like what you said resonated with me because it's like it, it's art like it's martial arts yeah. like, that, uh, that's that's the art part of it right yeah so like uh, it, it's it's the art of self-expression yeah. and like like it, it's 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 interesting like uh, i hear coaches talk about the the the, the bang system the Dwayne Lud yeah. ludwig yeah. uh uh, bank system it's like not everyone's fucking uh what's his name um tj dillashaw tj tj dillashaw thank you yeah like, not everyone's, like so like why why teach the same combinations yeah in that like like tj dillashaw if, if they can't fucking physically like do that or like you know what i mean so like for sure for sure so the, the one thing I wanted to point out was like what you said about letting people like kind of explore themselves and like figure like you know teach them like co concepts but like te like allow them to figure out how to get there uh, there's a book called The Creative Act by Rick Rubin. Oh, I think okay. you, I think you would love Creative that book. Okay. It, 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 you know, you know who Rick Rubin is? Uh, he's the music producer, right? Or yeah, dude, like, and, I, and I have his, I have his fucking book, and it is fucking like when it comes to anything creative, like yeah. anything, like it's such a good book to like to, okay. to build a foundation of how to be creative. For sure. Yeah, and I think that's important for like an artist in the state of expression, which. I think martial artists that I mean that that that's what they are. I mean, just think about what we were talking about like earlier, like Habib Nurmagomedov, Islam Makachev trained at the same place, like you know, for years. But if you look at them, they're two very they're I mean they're similar, just some similarities, but they're still two different martial artists in, in terms of that. Like their expression is gonna be different because they're different people. Because there's more than just where you train at and like what you've trained that's gonna dictate how you move. There's gonna be like you know how you think like just how like just the thought patterns like that's everyone's like movement is gonna be unique to them in, in that kind of in that kind of instance so they're not they're not like a monolith and yeah that. so exactly that's like that comes with the yeah that comes with creative expression i think that's great it's a creative act by rick, rick Rubin. yeah i think i honestly like a state of being not merely a skill okay that's interesting yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's a good fucking book it, it, it's like honestly i wish I mean, granted, you know what? Maybe like I was gonna say, I wish I read this sooner. I wish I, or actually, to be you, fair, you read it when you needed it. <laughs> I, I, two things. I read it when I needed to, and the book wasn't available before then. Before then, <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think yeah. the book was. I, I think the book just came out last year. So like, oh, okay, uh, so you did I, read I, when you needed it. Yeah, I, I, I read when I needed it, and like it, like it, like uh, because it, it kind of like, this, this is how I feel like about like I'm very aware of like. I, I'm more aware of whether or not a thought and an idea comes from me or from something that I consumed. Like, uh, cause like I'm, I, I, cause I don't like to claim things that aren't myself. That's why I'm very like, ad like not adamant, but I'm very like focused on like, whenever I see something like, like for example, I said like in, in the post fight press conference, Islam said, or yeah. like, or Dustin said, yeah. like, I, I like, I, th like th these are like, you know, in regards to like Chandler's like chances against McGregor, yeah. like, like those aren't my analysis you know what i mean like uh, yeah. like those are 
like that's that's Dustin. So like I'm not gonna like take what he says and make it my own, yeah. but like I am aware of like it's like okay, I'm in I'm influenced by certain things. Mm -hmm. Like I'm influenced and like that that kind of seeps through me to create my perspective on life. Mm -hmm. And like I, I made a video on my uh, my other YouTube channel, like uh how to learn everything from everything. Uh like that you can apply like like you can take in so many different things from other mediums, other fields and apply it to something else. Like a lot of my comedy, like my energy is influenced by Kanye West. Got it. Yeah. Like, like, like he, he you know, like not, not necessarily like I act like him or mannerisms, but the energy his, his music brings. Yeah, like, like influence you to do something. Yeah. Yeah. So like, it, it's very like, you can learn everything from everything. Like, and maybe we can li link the video to the, yeah, yeah, for it, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Link, link that. And then like, what like, what YouTube channel was that for you, Mike? It, it was the uh, open mic YouTube channel. Open mic like, YouTube channel. When, when I was very active on it. And like, yeah. now it's like, I, I'm trying to get back to it to, <laughs> to do like more mental health shit, but it's, I just don't have time. For sure. But I think with the, yeah, and I think with the influencing, yeah, other arts influencing each other, uh, there was, yeah, there, there's this like training video of Roy Jones Jr., professional boxer or former professional boxer, now now a trainer. And he's, uh, he has pretty much, he's like playing like a hip hop song. And then he has his, he's like, oh no, you got to feel the rhythm. And that's going to be like the rhythm of how you're moving. And he's like stepping like in the beat. It's like, when you when when whenever a fighter moves they have a rhythm about it you gotta find like what your own rhythm is and he's like mm. that's what i think of, oh yeah he's using he's influenced by i mean yeah he's i guess roy jones did make a song but he's not <laughs> like, he <would> say, <laughs> a musician <laughs> he made so he made an album but like yeah y'all like, must have forgot oh, right professional musician roy jones yeah y'all must have forgot <laughs> but, like, but it just shows how i mean clearly his actual you know martial art was the art of boxing and that's what he was able to use his other creative influences in, into that so and if you think about it, that's how think about how he moved as a boxer if you look at rojo's super fluid super fast and that just kind of it's like that's the thing not just one thing is roy jones jr everything was a part of it and that all led to who he is as a person because it's not just like one element there so i think i think that's pretty great all right cool i guess we should uh yeah start wrapping things up here but I guess like Mike, any uh, shows you got coming up? It's like yeah, uh, it's June second, yeah. I, I got a I got a show in Tacoma on the thirteenth. Uh, show in um, Seattle on the June fifteenth. I am I'm trying to think of this at the top of my head. On the twentieth of June, I am performing in Tacoma again at the Tacoma Comedy Club, uh, competing in the World Series of Comedy and my first time in years since I've done this. And then July 5th and 6th, I'll be in San Diego at the Madhouse Comedy Club. And then on the 7th, I will be in San Diego still performing at 619 Spirit. So if you're in any of those markets, come on out, message me, and I'll get you tickets to the, sh to the show. Cool, cool. All right. Well, that's been another episode. Find this university. Sounds nope. good. I've been Pochola Cruz. has been Mike. Thank you. Uh, yeah. All right. And.